Hey guys, welcome back to another live trading recap. We've been having a lot of success trading the stacked and bound strategy with the Analytica Chart 3 recently, so that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. To get right into it, we enter short on those four stacked imbalances. We got a little bit late because my reaction time isn't the best, but we still got a pretty decent fill. We're looking to get 10 ticks here. We're going one to one in terms of risk reward, so we are risking $612 to make $612 since we are using five contracts on ES. As we line up for this next trade, I want you guys to check out this interesting candle formation. This is essentially indicative of lots of active buyers trying to push price up but being stopped by an equivalent level of active sellers. Passive sellers played a pretty minor role in keeping price down in this case. So for this trade, the imbalances aren't adjacent to each other, but they're all within one tick of each other, so it fits the rules I set for today. However, it's up to you to decide to use this strategy, so if you don't want to use the one tick gap rule, you're free to not do that. One disadvantage of trading stacked imbalances is you really do have to be paying complete attention to the screen at pretty much all times throughout the trading day, except when you're in a range. In order to trade stacked imbalances, it is pretty much essential to get your NinjaTrader trade entry and exit hotkeys set up in your options menu. It's pretty straightforward, but I'll post a link in the description on how to do that. However, it is very difficult to consistently enter and exit trades quickly and effectively without them. For this entry, you're waiting once again for it to cross above this small leg. This strategy doesn't like choppy areas, but once you clear the chop, you're good to go. We had another one of those compound imbalances where there was a one tick gap, but then it later turned into just a regular imbalance. So we go in there and then we're about to get filled. So as we line up for this entry, once again, there are that there is that range that was forming right up there. You want to avoid trading in those areas. There weren't any imbalances that we saw. However, if there were, you wouldn't have wanted to take those. So for that entry, that imbalance appeared and then disappeared. So it's up to you if you want to exit a trade early if an imbalance disappears. However, I stuck with it and then I kind of paid for it in the end. So you are going to want to find those confirmed imbalances sometimes. Like I said before, high confidence trades are your friend here. You're going to want to make sure you're going into the highest probability trades possible. What I really like about this strategy is that is, although you do have to pay a lot of attention, you have so many opportunities for trades that you can actually make a lot of mistakes. I think I missed five or six winning trades today. However, I still did really well. If you, if you miss a trade, not a big deal. Just keep going. We do end up losing that trade, but that's just part of the game. Uh, you can't let that kind of thing trip you up. We followed all the steps correctly. We didn't do anything wrong and it just flipped back on us. So on to the next one. There does end up being a trade right after this. So even if you get stopped out of a trade, be aware, be watching, wait for a good opportunity like this one. Uh, we caught this one kind of late. I looked away from the screen for a second here, but there was that three stacked imbalance there. So we end up going short and we get filled pretty quickly. Like I said before, filled without much difficulty. However, we still are paying attention because the price is still moving downward. We're going to be looking for that uh, next short entry. We're not really going to be looking for long entries here because that would pretty much form a V shape and V shapes don't really work out too well in trading order flow on a range chart. You end up getting a lot of chop and you'll get stuck in a range, especially because our stop loss is so tight. It's a one to one risk reward ratio. So you're not going to want to be looking for those kinds of entries. We end up entering that trade because the previous bar, there was an imbalance at that price level. So you can follow that rule if you want. I'm kind of being a little bit risky here, being kind of greedy because the market's already in a downtrend. If you guys aren't comfortable with how the strategy works and you guys are just starting, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend sticking just to the basic stacked imbalances. So for this trade, we're looking at some previous chop, a lot of fighting in between active buyers and active sellers. However, we see a pretty nice imbalance after it breaks to that level. We get in a little bit late, but that's all right. I'll show you what happens here. It just touches our limit order. We don't get filled and then we end up getting stopped out on this trade. A lot of times this will happen and you're going to have to get used to it when trading. Just remember the big picture. Daily or even weekly performance doesn't really matter when you're looking at the monthly horizon. As long as your strategy is concrete and you have actual reason to believe your strategy works, you're completely set. Your biggest enemy when trading a good strategy is yourself. 
you got to make sure you don't doubt yourself and that you've tested your strategy and you've actually become confident in what you're doing. We actually missed two trades prior. I did mark those just to see where they would have filled if I had taken them. But you know, like I said, you do have to be paying attention and I wasn't really paying attention here. Caught them a little bit late so I wasn't able to enter. We do enter short at this stack to balance. There's a one tick gap. However, of course, like we talked about before, that's acceptable. We go short for 10 ticks. Um, I just wanted to mark and see exactly where it was just in case. However, I'm not gonna move my stop loss or take profit. I don't really like to do that even if our fill is a little bit off. However, I do sometimes like to look at it just in case. We have a pretty natural fill there, just the market continuously moving downward without really any real resistance over there. So I'd say that was a pretty good. If you guys are a fan of Elliott Wave strategy um, or Elliott Wave theory, you can see that the market kind of does move in waves. Order flow is a good way to visualize this and see how it happens. There was a little bit of a leg down there, then it moved up a little bit, got some chop, and then now we're in, back into that downtrend movement. So we do enter short here when we see that stacked imbalance. Although that third imbalance is on a bar after it, I still count it because it is a range chart. If it was a minute chart, I wouldn't count it. However, it is right there to make that perfect three level imbalance. So we do, we do use that as an entry condition. What's really nice about this strategy is that it pretty much works in every market condition as long as you've got the right settings. As you can see, we're trading a 10 range on ES. We usually trade 15. However, today I wanted to get a little bit more precision regarding on where we were going. We're using a 10 tick stop loss take profit. So I did want to have that line up a little bit so we could visualize it better. What you can see on the 10 compared to the 15 is that we're able to see the market moving up leg and down. Where on 15, there'd actually be a significantly less number of bars because you'd lose a lot of data from the chop. But since we get that price movement completed on the bar, we're able to see more data when we look back than we would on the 15 range. We did end up missing that last trade here. This is about time where I said, you know, maybe it's time to call it quits just for today because there was about a two hour period where I didn't see a single imbalance that was tradable. However, and then when we missed that one, it was just like, well, you know, let's call it quits. It's, I'm already up $2,800. So that was a pretty solid trading session. That's pretty average compared to this. I mean, I am trading five contracts. I highly recommend you don't start on five contracts, but I'd say the amount of ticks we captured was pretty standard for this strategy. We did end up um, completing on $2,900. However, we lost a lot of money to commissions. Our actual gross total was near around $3,400, but commission and slippage, or actually, sorry, after slippage, it was $3,400, but commission really screwed us over there. The commission that I pay is about $3.50 total per contract. Since I'm trading five contracts, that does add up pretty quickly. Slippage is around $25 per contract. And that, because I'm using market orders, however, that is kind of inconsistent. So I'd say it's more of an average of $12.5 per, uh, per contract. But since trading five, it adds up pretty quickly. If you want to mitigate that effect, you can use limit orders. However, you might end up in a situation where you don't get filled. Um, I like to prefer the speed at which I get filled compared to the price because I just want to get in as quickly as possible when I see that entry strategy. But that's completely up to you guys. If you guys want to save some uh, some money on slippage, um, that's a good way to go. However, I don't really recommend it simply for, uh, for strategies like these. We are really on a time limit right here. See, these trades have a very short holding period. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. This is Futures Analytica. Please let me know down in the comments how you guys are trading this strategy. I've been getting some really good comments and uh, emails regarding the strategy and how it's pretty simple to use and they've been getting good results, at least on sim. Um, I do want to see how you guys are doing and how I can make this easier for you guys. If you guys need any tips on how to trade the strategy effectively, please let me know. The settings I'm using for the Analytica Chart 3 are in the description. And if you guys aren't familiar with the Analytica Chart 3, it's going to be linked in the description. It's the best way to get into order flow and it is definitely the most affordable. We have a lot of exciting content coming up these weeks with a lot of tutorials on some pretty great strategies that'll work in a varying level of market conditions. But uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications if you want. We release new videos uh, probably twice a week coming out from now, but every Wednesday at least. So hope you guys have had an awesome week trading and I will see you all in the next one.